do snow plow, you know how much of a hassle it is to see what's behind you. Especially if you have tinted windows. So, in order to fix that, I came up with this system right here. Uh, to start, this is 2x2 two two stock. And what I did, I welded a piece in the center to go into a trailer hitch. As well as drilled out a hole there. And what I thought, and I thought it'd be a good idea to have some type of bumper on the back. You know, God forbid you were to tap a tree or something. You never know when, when it's snowing like crazy. It's good to have all the protection you can get. So what this is, this is a one, piece, one by one piece of softwood. Uh, it has a pilot hole drilled out and then I took a larger drill bit to flush mount the head of the screw that way if anybody taps this they won't be hitting the screw head and then just a pilot hole into my I'm, I'm gonna call it a plow buddy okay so this is gonna be on the back I know I spray painted it pink but it is good for visibility especially you know cuz snow is white and pink's pink so it stands out uh, I had this same hitch on last year for plowing and I ended up using those really crummy lights and I purchased those from Walmart I know I, I really try to support American made products but I was in a pinch waiting till last minute like I am today and yeah so last year when I had this system on the truck I had those lights mounted on the bottom uh, and more than, <clears throat> excuse me, I backed into quite a few snow piles and they really kept bending and they really weren't bright at all. They really, really crummy. So this year what I've decided to do is in addition to my wood bumper here, I'm going to mount my new lights on top. That way when I back into a snow pile they'll have... They'll, they'll be elevated, so hopefully uh, this bumper bar will hit the snow pile prior to, you know, hitting lights, but prior to hitting the lights, but the lights are going to be mounted on top, so that, that really isn't going to matter anyway. And ideally, you shouldn't be backing into anything, but you know, after 18 hours, yeah. So, here are the lights. I know I purchased these on eBay, made in Japan, but you know when money's kind of tight and you're looking for the best buck, they're the best value for your money. This is, these are quite good. I tested them out last night. They're incredibly bright. There's 36 watt Cree LEDs. Uh, I asked the guy to give me spot, but he ended up giving me flood. But for reverse lights, I'm not too worried. Uh, if you want to know the cost, I got a deal on these. I got four of them, uh, including shipping for 150 So I have these two, and I have another two inside if I want to mount those anywhere else on the truck where I think I may need light. Alright, so now I'm going to start assembling this, and I'll check in with you after I assemble it. Okay, so the lights have been mounted as well as the soft piece of wood that will provide that will serve as our bumper uh, briefly I'm gonna go over how I'm wiring this so behind the lights I have one hole drilled there one hole drilled there because this has the uh, because the wire coming out of the light has a pretty heavy rubber protective coating I'm not going to put a grommet on the ends, however, uh, the wire that I had to connect to extend the wire f coming from the lights, all those are going to come out here, and this is positioned in line with my seven prong trailer hitch on the truck, and I do have a grommet there. A little, a little tip if you're doing this in the cold, these grommets become very hard and brittle, so a way, an easier way to put them in there is to take a heat gun and just soften them up and take a flathead, small flathead screwdriver and put that in there. We'll get to that in a second. 
As for attaching my wires, I just have a piece of heat shrink and I'm going to show you the technique I use to uh, connect my wires. Find the place to put the camera. Okay, so I'm going to connect my two black wires. The way I like to do this, I like to have about an inch on either wire after you stripped it and make sure you have your heat shrink tubing on one side of the wire. I like to go about cross them at about a quarter distance of their total length. And then what I like to do, I like to wrap one wire around the other. Just keep wrapping till it finishes. Okay. That's one side. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and this is what we end up with. It's very strong, it won't pull apart, and you have a ton of contact. If you don't want to do any soldering, I think this is a great option to go. I much prefer to do that method as opposed to these crimps. I really don't believe in them. I've had them fail multiple times, a lot of bad contact. That's just my personal experience. Alright, so following that I'm going to put my heat shrink tubing on. And after the heat shrink I'm just going to give it a quick wrap in electrical tape. Just for added protection. Another quick note, if you're going to be spending a lot of time in making something look really nice, people are going to tend to want to steal it. So I would recommend purchasing a locking kingpin. I painted this one teal, but after use it kind of got worn down. But anyway, a great investment and just to maintain it, just make sure you keep that lock cylinder greased up. Alright, so it looks, it does, I'll, I'll give you that, it does look a little ridiculous, it doesn't look as nice as I'd hoped, but the purpose, it, I mean it serves a purpose. It's there to provide some extra light output and protection. It doesn't look as nice as my horseshoe trailer hitch, but for plowing, I think it will be a terrific asset. Okay, so the next thing that you want to do is you want to take a seven-pronged male trailer hitch coupler. Just a quick note, this will only work for the seven-prong because on the seven-prong, uh, one of these prongs does have a reverse output. So basically what that means when you throw your truck in a reverse, uh, uh, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute, but one of these will uh, provide 12-volt power uh, you know some people are probably gonna ask well do I need to fuse that no you don't need to fuse that all the power that's coming out of your trailer hitch is gonna be fused centrally to uh, your main fuse box so you don't have to put a fuse because the line is already gonna be fused inside your truck but you know if you have an extra fuse laying around it's not a terrible idea to do that all right, so I've just realized I've also screwed up. Uh, last year I had these lights positioned upside down. And so this whole bar was positioned upside down. So the hole was on this side. Now that I flipped it the opposite way, uh, looks like the hole's on the opposite side. Well, I guess that's no big deal. I, I don't have enough wire though. Okay, so that is a problem and I will figure that out momentarily. Okay, so I figured the way I'm gonna correct this problem is just run the wires underneath or on top and just bring them around and then put a piece of uh, protective wire conduit on top just to protect it and wrap it with some electrical tape. I have the grommet in and now it's time to wire. For wiring this uh, again, you need to make sure you have a seven-pronged trailer hitch on your vehicle. And now, number one, white, that's going to be your ground. So, for me, I'm not actually hooking up the white wires. The white wires are going to be the hot wires. 
uh, the black are going to be the ground. So for me, my two black wires are going to go to two, uh, where'd it go? Number one here, which is white ground. And now the plug in the center, that's going to be your hot, and that's going to that's going to provide 12 volt power whenever you set your vehicle into reverse. So I'm going to wire my two white wires into the center. And there she is, finished product. And that's just how I wanted it. How the wood will stick out past the light so if anything were to Hopefully, if anything were to contact with it, uh, it would hit that wood block first as opposed to the lights. You know, unless it's a soft bank and you end up backing into it or something's higher up, but it offers some protection and, I mean, for what the lights are worth, it, I, I mean 150 for four of them, so what's that come down to? That, that comes down to 75 per pair for shipping. And yeah. So that's how I ended up wiring this. It's kind of hidden underneath the hitch there. Another tip that I'd like to make is generally when you buy 2x2 two two stock, it doesn't really fit into your trailer hitch uh, very snug. So there is a little bit of w wiggle room. And a way to correct that, especially if you have it lopsided or something like that, you can cut a little piece of wood wedge and that will straighten it out and it will keep it solid and overall give you a cleaner look <laughs> alright so we're in the cab of the truck I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration of what my reverse lights look like before yep that's through the tint that is in my reverse lights that is in the reflection of my rear view mirror you can't see anything 